Well, hello everyone and back again to another episode of University and Everything in Between. I hope you've been enjoying listening to it so far. This is now episode seven and I'm joined with the wonderful Molly Thompson. We're now breaking (laughs) into like sort of speaking to new people from across the country rather than just specifically at York, which is what episode one to sort of six have been. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you... how are you doing? How are you doing anyway? I'm good. I'm good, thank you. Yeah, how are you? A bit warm I'm, right now, I won't <laughs> lie. <laughs> it's very warm for both of us. We're going through a bit of a heat wave. It seems to be up and down a lot of the time. It does. It does. I'm not complaining, though. I would much rather it was this weather than um, cold. Yeah, absolutely. God. And these lights don't make it any better, but... No, they don't. That is so true. Yeah, so what I'm going to be planning to do with talking to people from uh, different parts of the UK now is finding out a bit more like a broader idea of what it's like to study at some of the most challenging universities i'm going to be speaking to people hopefully from oxford and cambridge but also speaking to people who uh go to uni from where i live uh because i'm from leeds and crazy i'm excited to find out what that experience is like because uh i did consider it um (laughs) and just see what see what it's about see what's going on see you know what the experiences are um Mm -hmm. and specifically what we're going to be talking about in this podcast is like the leeds uni experience you know uh, from the different sorts of universities and meeting people from those different universities yeah. um, what relationships might be like at university because that's a hot topic I feel like yeah. I want to discuss yeah. today and just I want to learn a bit about what you've been doing in terms of traveling because I'm really at a split yeah. mind in the minute whether that's something I want to do I'm okay. going to I'm going to be speaking to a few people in the later episodes as well as about that but yeah I want to find okay, out well, about like what are the plus I'm what happy the pros. to try and convince you I'm happy to be the person to sway you because I am very pro traveling I'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate that. But uh, <laughs> it's going to be hopefully a really good episode. I'm very excited to speak to you, Molly. Um, first off, I'm starting this thing on all these episodes now where I sort of allow you to just take the stage for 30 seconds. Is there anything you're doing in your life right now that you really want to like promote? Or oh, is there gosh. anything that you you know, really want to shout out that you're doing? Um, I mean, not specifically. Obviously, the main thing that I do is social media. So for people listening that might not know, I'm a YouTuber. So I upload to YouTube three times a week. And currently, that is my full-time job. So I guess that's the only real thing I've got to plug. But yeah, my YouTube channel has been like my little baby over the last five years or so. So yeah, that's that's all I've really got going on at the minute. It's been a bit of a, a weird year in terms of other projects and other things because everything kind of just got shut down. So yeah. that's my main focus. No, p- people definitely should check out YouTube channel. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's it's sort of like a lot of people that I'm speaking to are really inspirational and do a lot of creative things. And I think you, I think it's fair to say you probably inspire a lot of people who've gone to university <laughs> with the things that you've done. I said the exact same to Dylan. He was an inspiration to me going to university. And the, one of the reasons why I yeah. went to York. And I really? reckon I reckon you're probably an inspiration to uh, a fair few people who decide, who come across your channel leading up to university and may choose to yeah. go to the, the Leeds Art Uni or maybe mm-hmm. another uni in Leeds. Yeah. Um, but you have just recently graduated from the... Uh, sort of. <laughs> sort of. You're in like a sort of weird transitional phase or whatever. Yes. Yeah. So I wouldn't really call it graduating, but I did finish the course that I was studying at the Art Uni last May now. So about 14 months ago, a bit longer. Um, but yeah, I was doing an art foundation degree at the Art Uni. Yeah, that's... Uh, I mean, that must put you in touch with a lot of different types of people as well yeah yeah absolutely I think it was really good for contacts and that was one of the reasons I wanted to do it because I was really unsure about what I wanted to study um, and I really didn't know like choosing an undergraduate seemed so daunting because I just didn't know what I wanted to do so this course kind of allows you to dabble in a little bit of everything to do with like art and design which yeah. means that you get to meet a lot of people that then go on to be graphic designers animators photographers and it's handy to know people in that industry when I still work in a similar industry because I'm like hey I just need some animation doing and I know people that can do it so it it definitely was helpful in that respect yeah I mean a little side tangent um have you checked have you checked that website uh, the tab I think it's like the tab they run a they run a web page or an article series every year about the top UK student YouTubers and on oh, the no. description oh, yes. on the description for you whoever wrote it has claimed that your art it's degree wrong. is a massive influence into your thumbnails what what yeah. what, what is that about <laughs> Definitely not. No, I I did read that. Actually, I do know what you're talking about. All the information's wrong. I don't know who did the research for that, but they obviously didn't really do it. Uh, They also said that I was at the actual University of Leeds, I think. So it was all very, very mismatched. And I mean, I don't think the art degree was any help on the thumbnails other than maybe it helped my Photoshop skills. So maybe a little bit, but yeah, definitely not a direct link. I don't know where they've got that from. You're just naturally massively creative. (laughs) 
who needs an art yeah. degree anyway? <laughs> well, yeah, you've got it on lock anyway. Was... <laughs> no, I've always been a creative person, which is why I started that degree. But it just wasn't really for me to continue to do a full three years in art. What comes after? What comes after doing doing the art degree? What are you what are you most looking forward to? I'm guessing it's some sort of <sighs> possible career, or still doing YouTube, or yeah. I mean, I really want to have YouTube be like a a starting point for whatever is going to become my career and to be honest the reason I didn't go to uni was because or the, the reason I didn't continue and do full three years was because I just couldn't pick one thing that I wanted to do and doing YouTube it allows me to do all sorts of stuff because I'm a video editor and a photographer and I work with brands and marketing but then I also just do like a, a lot of things off my own back as well um, yeah. so I definitely want to use it as a springboard to hopefully continue into like creative media somehow you go into like maybe uh, running some sort of social media campaign with a company that yeah. would be pretty cool yeah that would be really cool stuff like that that's a bit more long term as well like with brands is definitely the kind of thing I want to push towards but obviously this year has thrown a spanner in the works because I had it this has. year down as my like gap year travel year work everything out and then we'll have another look in September but now it's nearly September and nothing's happened this year so <laughs> it's, it's a bit stressful <laughs> it is it is yeah but there's nothing we can do no I mean, a lot of people that I've spoken to, they do have that sort of creative flair in them, like I think you do. Yeah. Um, and then you just mentioned there about like the fact that everything's sort of been completely flipped on its head. And I mean, I had placements that were planning to do that have been cancelled and stuff like that. Yeah. Is that what's like the main worry for you for the next year about whether things are going to, you know, actually come to fruition as it were yeah I think it's hard because at the beginning of all of this I was really optimistic that like by this time it would all just be over it'd be sorted and it'd be like you know back to normal and I don't really think I'd properly thought about what if this continues for a year because obviously you start making plans like a year ahead and I planned a lot of travel this year so obviously I started my year in Australia and that was just the beginning and then all of that got cut short and I kind of thought that's fine we'll push it back a year but now it's like well is it going to be a year? Is it going to be longer than a year? And obviously doing a yeah. job that's heavily based off advertising online is difficult as well because there's a lot of people pulling advertising campaigns because there's no money in it. And no, then exactly. that makes my job difficult because what am I getting paid from? So it is, it is difficult and you can't predict it at all, I don't think, at the moment. No, it's a challenge. It must be quite stressful. I mean... It is, it can be. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of might help in a way that you, you, your chosen career idea is like, predominantly online but the yeah the, the the sort of ad making side of things and doing things in person and doing film shoots and, and mm -hmm. having to record things that yeah. stuff's becoming like extremely socially distant but yes I, I, know of, I know of a few yeah I know of a few people who have somehow managed to land sort of filming gigs during this time and I'm seeing yeah. like behind the scenes footage of those, <laughs> these sets and people are just like as spread apart as you can possibly yeah. make it and like yeah. it, it just looks really really weird like surreal. really bizarre no I have a lot of friends that are photographers and they're trying to get back out with clients and shooting with people but obviously it's like well we can't really do any close-up photography so like go stand over there and we'll do some really long distance <laughs> stick photography stick on a telephoto lens and just like <laughs> yeah. get them from like miles away but it's you just gotta do what you can do haven't you but it is definitely yeah. difficult I think I feel like I mean in the last few months I've sort of seen from a lot of different people there seem some people are like being really productive mm. and other people are getting sort of like annoyed at how productive some people are being yeah and then there's like that weird in between where you don't know what you should be doing because of things yeah. are so weird um like do you feel like you've been a been in some sort of because because you have to be doing things a lot to maintain an mm. audience and i mean yeah. I, I feel the same with this like trying to push out as many episodes as i can yeah do, do you do you feel like you've been in some sort of like productivity contest almost trying to like keep things going and rolling a little bit i do I do think that online it's very easy for it to start to feel like a competition, especially in the industry that I'm in, like, because I know so many other people that do the same or very similar things in terms of content and Instagram and, you know, being an influencer, if you want to call it that, um, that it can feel a bit competitive, because if you're having a down day where you're just like, you know, feeling a bit rubbish and you don't really want to do anything or you don't want to get up and get dressed, and then you go on Instagram and everybody you're looking at is 
out on a run or like putting up the third video of the day and it's just like oh my god I feel like I'm getting behind even though yeah. it's not a competition and I'm not being compared to them directly it's just how I make myself feel in my head so I definitely think over the last couple of months it's been a weird flip-flop of like yeah I've got so much spare time let's get it all done and then also like I've got no motivation and I feel really rubbish I don't want to do anything so it's been a hopping all over the place and it's it's definitely been an odd couple of weeks yeah I mean personally from my perspective what I can tell is I mean you you're an advocate for like being open and honest about mental health mm -hmm. and things like that but yeah. I think generally as a topic like mental health amongst some of the m most popular youtubers in the in the UK or even the world yeah. it's not really approached as a subject that much about their personal because yeah. you have to share your life like quite regularly and, yeah and, 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 <laughs> you know you, you might just go to I don't know go to the park or something or go for a walk and you're constantly thinking like maybe that might be something interesting to take a photo yeah. of or like yeah. share that or uh -huh. letting people into your life can be quite yeah. a weird experience on that extreme level i mean definitely yeah. everyone everyone in a weird way everyone openly shares these things but it's usually just to us a, 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 a more like close-knit group they're friends or their family yeah. for example yeah, where, yeah. Where, whereas like a lot of the people that view your sort of you know content and, and photos mm -hmm. is, is such a broad spectrum of people yeah <laughs> Do you, are you constantly aware of that in, in like yeah a yeah I think I definitely am I think it's a it's a weird one because like when I started obviously I had not really anybody following me so I was like sharing it and posting it and not really thinking of the repercussions because I didn't have an audience but now I'm very aware whenever I'm doing anything it's like well I feel almost as though I'm responsible for how I make this look or like how I make other people feel by sharing this and there's a lot of stuff that goes on in your head and I think that if you really overthink it it can get a bit intense and it can get a bit draining as well because at the end of the day I just started out doing this because I wanted to share and document my life and what I was doing and if people want to watch that's amazing but also like the reason I started wasn't because I wanted loads and loads of people to be watching and I think no. sometimes it's hard to remember that because it feels a lot it feels intense yeah do you, do you almost when you see someone for example it's like a little thought experiment i suppose when you when you see someone on youtube or whatever uh with like i don't know a million two million three million mm -hmm. followers and they're yeah. having some sort of open breakdown almost yeah do yeah. you in a way feel some sort of uh empathy towards their experience because yeah. you kind of understand what it might be good comp yeah as opposed to someone watching it just yeah thinking no absolutely because I think there's a lot of stressful things that go into doing a job like this that people maybe don't think about unless they do it so if I see somebody else being really honest and being really like raw about how they feel and how it's making them feel being online all the time I look at it and I think oh, I'm really glad they're saying that because that's me too and I think sometimes that's why it's important that I share stuff like that as well because otherwise you seem like you're some kind of superhuman where you're just not being affected by things that <laughs> yeah. actually do affect you so yeah I think it's important to be to be honest yeah I'd hope so I mean you seem to be pretty honest and I think you're you know the people who, <laughs> who speak to you probably agree with that as well yeah um, I would hope so but yeah if, if you were in that situation would you be just as honest about something that you're experiencing in terms of yeah making people aware of you know you might be going through a tough situation mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I definitely would be. It obviously depends on the situation and sometimes I'd probably speak about it after it had happened rather than whilst it was happening. But yeah. what, when I moved away to Leeds and lived at uni, I was really honest about the fact that I was really homesick um, and I found it really, really difficult in the first couple of months to adjust to that lifestyle and because I was so used to like daily vlogging and weekly vlogging and uploading content all the time I couldn't really hide that because it was obvious in how I was acting and how I was as a person and yeah. I think that at the time I didn't think too much of it because that was just my life but then afterwards looking back now I find it really hard to watch those videos but I also know that they were really helpful to everybody else going through a similar feeling and I yeah. think it's a common thing that's not often spoken about so that was definitely a time where I was noticeably being quite raw and quite myself on camera yeah I mean going to I've, going to do YouTube at uni must be uh, quite a lot to put on your plate yeah is it, yeah <laughs> is, was it <laughs> is it a case of like how much how much different is your sort of because um, I've only seen a few videos on your channel but how, how yeah. much different is your sort of on camera personality versus because I feel like everyone sort of turns it up to 11 just a little yeah, bit definitely. when the camera yeah. starts I mean I'm doing it now so yeah, so, so. <laughs> you can, it's good to be self aware <laughs> it is it is 
Because I think sometimes I think like if I didn't play it up a little bit, I'm just an average person. I don't think it would be that interesting to watch. So I always just try and vlog like, you know, the best bits or sometimes the worst bits so that it's like, you know, honest and raw. But I do think I have, and I think this in my head sometimes, like a, a beauty spectrum personality for when I've got my camera out. And then when I'm just Molly and I'm just with my friends or I'm with my boyfriend or I'm just like, you know, not doing anything at all. I'm just very average and I think you do have to... Yeah turn it up a little bit but I'm not trying to be like fake or like a different no. version of me it's just like the best version of me so yeah yeah living that best life that's what we like <laughs> there's a to. funny I know you sort of cringed at it in the pre-interview but there's that funny little phrase that that uh, made it onto that website yeah which do you one? want me to say it <laughs> The I don't spectr know. The oh, spectrum yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, How does that, that was start? probably my own bad. Because I think I referred to my viewers as that when I was about 15. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't have a name for like all the people that watch me. And that was just where that came from. But then a few people, like viewers, clung to that. And I was like, no, 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 no. It's done now. <laughs> Let it go. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So that happened. But that was a while ago. That's, uh, I think that was, uh, that was definitely a thing in the. Uh, yeah. I don't know, like 2015 era, but it's like, yeah. um, oh, but it's like that um, Benedict Cumberbatch interview on the Graham Norton show when he went on and found out the cu about the Cumberbitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he just didn't know that it was a thing, but <laughs> he just didn't know it was a thing. I oh, mean, God. thankfully, it's not quite as bad as that. I would say that's worse. Oh, there's tons of different ones. There's, oh, <laughs> I, I, you could, they can find them online, I'm sure. <laughs> but I, I love stuff like that because I mean, I love finding out where it starts, and then usually it's like. I feel like people can relate to this. It's when I first, it's a completely s different thing, but when I yeah. first made a Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see I what it's going. Say, yeah. I, made, <laughs> I made a Snapchat when I was like 14 or 15, and yeah. my username was Liam Yearboy because right. I just thought I was so cool. Yeah. And, and you can't change it, can you? And you can't change it, and I die. Uh, I, the it's embarrassment the yeah. I go through when I have to tell people. No, that was me, and I think that that name incident was definitely sparked off my own back. But now it's just like, oh god. <laughs> but there's nothing you can do about it. I don't know. Just own it. Just own it. Yeah, now. maybe, maybe that's the other way, isn't it? That's the other way. There's two extremes. But yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna throw it back to talking about the last year of university. It was mm -hmm. last year that you were at uni, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was 2018 yeah. to 2019. Cool. I mean, it's not that far away um, in yeah. terms of in terms of when it happens. So you're, the memory should still be fresh. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I haven't forgotten about it. Was that the first time you'd gone to university? I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I went straight from school. I left. I did my A levels in the summer of 2018, and then I moved in the September to right. Leeds. Um, so it was like straight away, pretty much like how most people do. And I, the only reason I really did that, to be honest, was because all my friends were going and I felt like, oh God, I need to do something because I don't have anything else lined up. And at the time, my social media wasn't quite where it's at now and I couldn't quite sustain doing that full time. And I was like, do you know what? I'll just go, I'll just do that and that'll be fine. And I don't really think I'd thought it through. And then I moved to Leeds and I sat in my little room and I was like, what have I just done? Like, like, oh, I don't shit. know why I just did this. Yeah, literally that exactly. So it was a lot. It just kind of hit me at once. I mean, that, that's funny that you say that, to be fair, because I feel like some people will relate to that. I mean, yeah. you kind of like can get swept up in the moment a little bit. It's surreal, it's surreal thinking back now for me. Like well, the first day that I arrived in my flat looked way different to the last yeah. day because you, you just remember things differently. Yeah, but yeah. Like, is there anything that you sort of, look back on that maybe you, you, you would have told yourself when you started as like a bit of an advice thing? Because I'm interested I think to see would, what you say. Yeah, I think mainly just to like stick it out and that it actually will be okay. Because I think I was very overwhelmed to start off with because I lived in a flat with four lads and just me. So that really overwhelmed me and that threw me off because there was no girls, I didn't know any girls. And I was like, oh, I feel a bit out of my depth. And they knew each other. And then it was like, just oh, me no. in the flat. And I That's was like, weird. oh. It was, it was really bizarre, but luckily they ended up being lovely. But for the first yeah. few days, I was like, just keeping myself in my room. I was really shy, which is unlike me because I'm not a shy person. And I was just like in over my head really. And I didn't know what to do. And then I think that I really considered dropping out because I was like, I don't like it. I didn't really enjoy the course and I never really enjoyed the course. But I did come to love living in Leeds and I loved my flatmates. But to start with, I was just like, ah. So I think my main advice would be to just stick it out and don't panic about absolutely every little thing because it's going to be fine. 
it sounds like you had like the full sort of package yeah. of everything that you could yeah in terms of- i did have a really stressful first couple of weeks i think the first month was just a blur because i was just not yeah. having a good time i mean I, I was similar to be honest like i've spoken mm. about it on previous episodes um but yeah big shock for sure yeah and, and absolutely it's a huge I, shock to the system i think yeah but i'm gonna completely agree with you like sticking it out is such a good it's yeah. such a good way to do it but you know right at the beginning when sort of uni started um sort of like this is a thing that i feel like a lot of people do and it's something that i do or i did when i first started anyway and you and you put in so much thought into like your first impressions of people yeah. and yeah. people's first impressions of you um mm-hmm. so in terms of that one of the first like it, it is quite a it is quite like a shallow way to look at it but on yeah. a very basic level people's first impressions of you are what you look like yeah yeah I absolutely mean, that is just how it works like yeah so as someone who advocates a lot of like the beauty and the makeup mm-hmm. and the fashion and things like that um, yeah. did you feel an extra pressure as it were to sort of maintain some of that appearance as um a little bit especially to start with because you say first impressions are a lot based on like how you act but also how you look and what you're wearing and you know all of that stuff so I think just as much as a regular person would stress about what they wore on the first day but I do also think that I know that if people watch my videos on YouTube I am pretty pretty honest and I'll film without makeup and I'll film in my pajamas and I'm like I'm not bothered because I'm trying very much to portray like a normal person because like I am a normal person but then I do think in the back of my mind it's like oh my god if they've watched a video where I look you know put together and done up and then they see me in uni and I'm just (laughs) in my like joggers it's just a bit embarrassing because I look like a catfish but but it wasn't really ever a massive issue because I think I'm quite chill I'm quite laid back how long did it last for you before you sort of started just like letting yourself go a little bit um, <laughs> it literally didn't last long for me i was yeah, like i would i would say maybe like october <laughs> like literally I not very I, long After i'm not even exaggerating like... yeah i'm not even exaggerating i think i've got like maybe five different outfits <laughs> <laughs> see I, you have I no do idea have, yeah i think the beauty of me um living in leeds was that I, I have a lot of clothes so i took like half my wardrobe with me and could leave half a wardrobe here and I still had clothes in either place but the downside was there's way more shopping places in Leeds than where I live so every other day I'd be like oh my god I'll just go shopping because it was like novel and new to me so I just ended up with more clothes than I had space for in my tiny student flat so I definitely didn't wear the same outfit loads but I did I did go in in leggings and joggers frequently like most days you can you can fully just waste a day just walking around Leeds shopping oh yeah it's oh yeah yeah I love doing that actually I haven't done that for ages but yeah I loved it while I was living there funny story actually um for for my mate's 21st birthday right we'd planned a full bash that she didn't know about at her house oh wow and one of my one of the other mates whose job it was to distract her the entire day she's from south uh she's from south england around london that area yeah, She'd never yeah. been to leeds in her life neither of them uh-huh. had been to leeds in her life it was wow. their job to wow. keep her away from the house in york because we go to uh-huh. new york so they decided to take yeah. a day trip to leeds fair enough yeah <laughs> That's and valid. basically halfway through the day basically the one whose birthday it was was getting really frustrated by the end of the day because she didn't understand why they couldn't yeah. just go home yeah, and yeah, yeah they ended up uh you know like south of the river that mm-hmm. goes through Leeds it starts yes. to get a bit rough as you go sort yeah. of south of Leeds yes. they ended up somehow because they didn't know what they were doing they ended up <laughs> all the way through the south of Leeds terrifying themselves going through like oh my God. the dodgiest neighbourhood why would you leave the centre the centre's big enough you could stay in the centre for hours and I never hear the end of it that Leeds is a shithole and they hate it because oh, of that one no. experience no 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 I disagree with that <laughs> I mean, Leeds is so easy. It's literally up and down. It's yeah. just up and yeah. down. Everything's up and down as long as you mm. just stick to that rule. I love it. I absolutely love Leeds. I haven't been for ages, obviously, but I just think that if I could live back there in the future, I definitely want to because I really love living in the city. Yeah, it's it's a great place. I mean, yeah. I uh, the primary and only reason why I didn't want to go to like the Uni of Leeds or Beckett or whatever because yeah. I did look around the mall is because I literally live yeah. ten minutes oh, yeah. away. I definitely think if you go to the city that you live in it's going to be a different uni experience not necessarily a bad one but it's not it's not the same as moving away but what was the what's the experience of going to sort of we're gonna we're gonna get into talking about like 
super big Leeds Uni experience because I yeah. don't know loads of it. My, um, I mean, another random tangent, like my, um, my auntie works in the, oh, the shop, the big supermarket near the taxi rank and like the, at the top near head row. Um, um Morrison's. Morrison's, that's it. She works in there. <laughs> she sees students going through all the time. Yeah, buying that was me. Drinks and, and she complains to me, like all of the things she sees she like mentally puts on to what i do at uni yeah even though yeah. she's never seen me at uni yeah. once and doesn't know what i do so e mm. every bad thing she sees go on at, at, in leeds she just assumes that that <laughs> might be what happens <laughs> that's what's with happening me. in york <laughs> yeah what how much <laughs> what what was your experience like at uh, the leeds art uni was it i think yeah obviously i think it's a different experience to people that go to uni of or to beckett because they're the two big like rival universities and then there's a lot of other separate smaller unis in leeds like there's trinity yeah. and there's the music uni and then the art uni um and obviously it's not on the same scale but in terms of being a student i do think it was very similar like the campus was in the city center the clubs are obviously all the same and i lived with people that were at Beckett and were at the uni of. So I definitely had like a very mixed bag because I think you're either usually your uni of or your Beckett, whereas our yeah. flat was 50-50 and then me at the art uni, it was very, very bizarre. But I really rate it. I think as a student city, I've been to quite a lot because I went to visit my friends a lot um, last year and this year, all across the country. And I, I think I'm biased, but I think Leeds is one of the best because there's so much there as a yeah. student that you can do that you're never bored. And I think that that's something that you don't get everywhere. No. So you've had like almost the ability to just like taster every, like yeah. all well, the different Yeah, well that was the beauty. Yeah, because obviously I only did a one year course. So then when my friends went into second year, I was like, they were all like, oh, you're not going to be sad that you're not going to be a student this year. And I was like, no, because I'm just coming out in your city and then your city and your city. So I was like doing London, <laughs> Birmingham, Newcastle. Pick. It was great. I loved it. it. Would London not be like the worst? I mean, I know that's like a, <sighs> but yeah. I'm speaking to a few people who, who are sort of, in that area, King's College London, stuff like that. I'm, uh -huh. I'm really keen to uh -huh. find out whether it like is just yeah. a massive I mean, like financial, emotional drain. Yeah, <laughs> like, I do like, think it's very, very different. I don't, I don't actually know anybody at London Unis. I've got friends that live in London, but they're not students there. Um, so I've been out with them, and it's like a different experience. But they say. But they say like they much prefer coming up to like Leeds and to Manchester to go out here because the atmosphere is not the same. And I'm not saying it's worse, but I do think that it's just a very, very different atmosphere to like clubbing in a northern city. Yeah, it's just it's just there's it's so huge. I don't know how many people. It's live massive, in isn't it? It's uh, interesting that you mentioned though that your flight is like fifty fifty. Yes, it was. Yeah. I think it happens at every sort of major city um, where there's like multiple units. But in York, just for a bit of context, there's like this sort of friendly rivalry with a university uh -huh. called York St. John. And yes. for, for, for whatever reason, they are seen as like, <laughs> 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 they are just straight, I'm not, I'm, go I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. They're seen as like sort of being idiots. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's always that though, I think in every city, because that's if the you know same with I mean, Uni of Leeds and like, Leeds Beckett, isn't it? It is a stereotype though. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, of course. I've yeah. met, met tons of people who are fantastic, but like, yeah. I've heard stories of like meeting people from other unis whilst out on night outs and they're just mental. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. And if people have had a drink as well, it's just escalated. It's like the next level. It's yeah. like, they're only at a different uni. It's not that deep. I know. There's like a proper like tradition that you can slag them off and yeah. it's absolutely fine yeah. i think it's some sort of like superiority complex with the fact that uni of york's russell oh, yeah. group and like yeah st john's Same like uni of leeds yeah i was gonna yeah. ask like is is there a situation where perhaps like uni of leeds is like standing themselves above everyone yeah. else just like yeah I think I had an interesting position because obviously I was looking at it from an outside point of view of going to neither but being friends with people who went to both so I would go on nights out with like uni of Leeds and we'd go to places that were specifically for that uni like their nights out or their student union and it would be a very different vibe to going on like a Beckett sports night and it was just not the same at <laughs> all and I don't think there was a better or a worse but I do think that uni of has more of a like prestige like all traditional university and it's like you know not the same vibe as Beckett but I don't know it was interesting it was definitely funny because we had a lot of conversations that would start out as a joke and one of them would be slagging the other one off and then it would end up in an actual argument and it's like <laughs> it's fine it's not that deep it's not that deep guys <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever seen it get that intense in York 
But it was quite funny. It was just because they were just lads and they're just being rowdy, but it was it was a laugh. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. Do you think it's um, I I, I think personally, it's definitely part of that like uni experience having a bit of light like, beef with the other with the other oh, yeah. in your city yeah, or yeah. town or whatever. Do you think definitely. it's do you think it's fun part of the part of the experience you know yeah i think so and i think i didn't really realize it was going to be a thing until i lived there and i think because yeah. i was living with both of them it took me about a week to realize that this is like a real thing like everybody's bringing it up all the time but i i was very naive to it before i moved there i just thought everyone to be honest i probably in my head just thought everyone went to the same uni because i've never really thought about it i just knew that i was going to the art uni and that was it so it was quite funny. Yeah, you get that. You get that like, benefit of the outsider's perspective yeah. being yeah. being at the Leeds Art Uni. But do, yeah. did the Leeds Art Uni have much of a sort of dedicated li- night sort of life or, or sort of freshness no. or anything like that? Not really. They had occasional things that they would. I mean, I don't know how well you know Leeds, but there's like um, a venue called Belgrave, and they would do quite a lot of things there because it was a bit more arty and a bit more edgy. Um, but generally, they're just mixed with like. Beckett's nights out because it was a lot more like friends with so Beckett. So you just you kind of like piggybacked on the other the other. Oh uh, yeah. Which one's better? Yeah. Which one's was the best one? Oh, <laughs> what for a night out or just generally? That's hard. However you want to take it, I'm gonna see which, which friends think, you alienate here. <laughs> I, I think the best nights out were when I was with Beckett at their sports <laughs> nights because they just they know how to have a laugh. But then I think uni of do really good nights out as well. I don't know. It depends what day you go out. Beckett, I Beckett strikes me as being that sort of like young hip uni, if you know yeah. what I mean, in the least yeah. cringy way possible. Like, <laughs> no, 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 I agree with you actually. Whereas like uni of Leeds is like just oozing with tradition. I mean, it's not. Yeah. It's not like and Oxford levels of bad, but I think also southerners and i know that's a, a, like a weird thing to say but i think if you come from the south and you move to leeds you're more yeah. likely to be going to uni of than you are to be going to beckett because uni of is like a russell group so there was a lot i met a lot of friends from like london and surrey that went to uni of and that was not the case at beckett they were mainly all from leeds this is the problem i have during the holidays it's definitely a trend isn't it there's some sort of like unwritten memo that everyone's been given that if you're in the south you must go to uni in the north and if you're in the north yeah. you must go to uni in the south yeah yeah that, the, that definitely seems to be true because then on the holidays all of my mates just go back home to the south and then i'm like yeah yeah no i feel that most of my friends live like the midlands and below unless i went to school with them and it's like what are you doing why are you all so far away but (laughs) it is it is annoying it's so odd um but yeah like it does it does ultimately end up you you sort of meet loads of different people with you know loads of different backgrounds and interests and stuff like that and like without it you would end up missing out a lot of people that you might not otherwise speak to yeah absolutely so. yeah and i think you, you never know how it's going to go until you're there so yeah but the, yeah. N- the nights out in leeds definitely seem like a lot of fun like i've, I've been uh, I've, I've lived in leeds for like three years um yeah been out like a handful of times in that time because obviously i'm only 20 so i've only lived here since 17 yeah. and above so i've been in right, york yeah. i've been in york for most of that time um but as far as i'm aware a lot of the nightlife, I mean, in the, in the research that I've done, you know, in the last week and a bit, the nightlife seems to be yeah. uh, gradually closing down. I mean, I noticed a few closures yeah. uh, with yeah, Tiger Tiger. Yeah, I do think, I think that's true. Closed. Have you, have yeah, you noticed I mean, it? I, obviously, I only lived there for a year, not even a full year, actually, like the academic year of... 2018 to 2019 and I did notice they closed a few places like beer colour was really popular and that that went whilst I was there I never even went to that and then since I left I have friends that are obviously still there and they'll message they'll be like oh my god this is closed and I was like what and then I saw somebody the other day and they said mint mint club has closed and I was I really think. surprised at that because that was really popular when I was yeah. there so it is it does seem like there are a lot of places closing down and I reckon the situation currently is not helping like nightlife venues at all to be fair leeds is such a big place there'll probably be something that replaces the ones that close down oh, anyway. absolutely so. yeah 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 and there's already like 20 times more places to start off with than there are in like hall where i live now so yeah i yeah. mean it's, it's like in york there's something like that apparently in york there is a, i don't know if you already know this there is a pub for every single day of the year I didn't know if you knew that. I did not know that, really. Yeah. Is York big enough to have that many pubs? You have. You will be surprised. <laughs> York's not that big. <laughs> I think no. York is actually surprisingly quite big. Like there's, there's the yeah, York City it, Centre, yeah. and then you've got like all the sort of neighbouring sort of villages the slash bit, towns that yeah. do technically still count as York, but they're they're yeah. not like the centre. Um, but mm. yeah, there's a lot of pubs. <laughs> that is that <laughs> is surprising. Lot. 
But it's like, it's like that case yeah. of if one of them closed, you might not even notice because there's just one would come and replace it or they're just That's like... That's true. It'd be reopened before you realised it closed yeah, down. It's like three more just sprout out of the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you cut the heads off the hydro or whatever. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Well, it's perfect if you're a student and you've just always got new places to be going. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. But what, I mean, has there been any like iconic nights out that you've remembered from your single year in, in, your, in Leeds? Was there anything that I really mean, stuck out? Even though I was only there a year, I managed to fit in quite a lot of nights out. Uh, so it's hard to just narrow it down. I mean, my personal favourite is Prism. I don't know if you've been to Prism in Leeds. That's just one of my favourite clubs. And it's a love-hate. You either love it or you hate it. And everybody laughs at me. But Everyone I've laughs. Had, I'm not surprised. I love it. I've had some of the best nights out in Prism because it's cheap, it's cheerful, and also there's something for everybody because there's three floors. So I used to go with my flatmates that loved like yeah. R&B and drum and bass. So they'd go and dance there and I'd be like I'm gonna go upstairs to the cheesy room and I'll just see you later and it was like it was just a good time but I think the night out that stands out the most is I don't know if you've heard of a club called church uh, it's no, literally no. in an old church it I just would, sounds I, like it should not be a nightclub I wouldn't be but surprised I'd hope so I'd feel a bit shortchanged if I turned up and it yeah, was like exactly. in some sort of you know dingy little office just, building yeah 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 <laughs> so it's just really cool because it just doesn't look like it should be a club from the outside but then when we got inside, it was like a themed event. It was one of the freshest events. And it was just probably one of the best nights out I've ever been on. And it was so random. And every time you looked up, it was like the church roof. And it was like, what is happening? But it was just really cool. I'm, uh, I, I respect that, to be fair. That sounds pretty sick. But, <laughs> it, yeah. is, it is a good venue. I'd stick with that story over the prism one. <laughs> Why? Oh, my gosh, no. Prism's amazing. You just haven't done it right. You need to go no, with the no, right no. people. No, no, no. Trust me. I've done it right. My first ever clubbing experience was Prism Leeds. Um, yeah. We, we turned up on the door. Turns out there was uh, two DJs playing that night called Stickmen. Have you heard of Stickmen? All right. No, I haven't. Definitely look them up after this. They basically wear right, okay. full black outfits with these laser oh, lights that go I think up I've them. seen them before, yeah. And now they've, they've, they've like completely revamped their act now. They, they play their gigs in like these boxes made of lights as well now. Yeah. Um, oh, wow. That was my first ever clubbing experience. And we so why are you up. complaining? I think that sounds like a great clubbing experience. <laughs> because, because then the three times after that, that I went to prison, it was just completely boring. Cause, but cause, you have cause to go. that was my no. like max, that was like my max experience. The so best you peaked possible and then it got ever. worse. And then, it, and right. then you quickly realise, when it's just like boring DJs playing music off yeah, like some yeah, desk, yeah, yeah. It, it gets. Nah, you need to go on a Monday or a Wednesday. Any other night of the week is dead, but Monday is their like quids in, and Wednesday is their sports social, and they're the best nights to go to Prism. It's just yeah, I've never had a bad night out there. I, I'm, I'm I'm not gonna knock it if you endorse it. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. I do, I do, I very much do. Is there anything that's like surprised you massively when you when you've been out, whether it was in the early days of your of your night out career, or yeah. I think that I was just quite naive to what an actual night out was going to be like because obviously I come from quite a small town you can't go out here so I'd done like two or three nights out in Hull which is my nearest city but it's just not on the same level as Leeds at all like it's just not comparable so I was like oh yeah it'll be like going to Hull and then I got there and it was just so different so many more people a lot more people doing drugs which mm. I'd never seen before I'd never been exposed to that so I was quite like taken aback and I think I was just naive to be honest to what it would actually be like and yeah. I hadn't thought it through until I got there and I was like this is overwhelming but but it, I think you get used to it and it is what it is. Isn't the whole like the capital of culture or something is that true? It it's is like the, it is the, yeah city of culture city I mean of, I'm not sure it's capital of culture. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds better actually no city of culture yes it is it was um the main year was 2017 but it has four years after that but I'm not massively sure that it is any different to before it was the city of culture but yeah some people decided in a poll or a vote that yeah, it was going to be basically <laughs> that capital. it needed some funding it, i think yeah, oh, was yeah, the bottom line of that. i mean that's fully just why it happened i mean yeah oh yeah have you ever been i uh is the deep in hall Yes, it is. Yes, yeah. I have been. There you go. <laughs> You've just named its two <laughs> only famous things. It's City of Culture and it has the deep. So, oh, and the Humber Bridge. We've got the Humber Bridge. Oh, yes, so the there Humber you go. Bridge, of course. Yeah. I've been across that. Yeah. It's, it's a fun time. Um, but yeah. It is. It lasts for about a minute and then yeah. it's done. <laughs> 
so it's not great the whole hole definitely needs a bit of tourism boom <laughs> it does it really really does but yeah so i think that that was why i didn't want to do uni in hull you know the culture award as it were it's almost like the oscars mm -hmm. when, when, a, when a film <laughs> wins an oscar it yeah. makes like 15 million more pounds at the box yeah. office just because yeah. of that award and, it, and it's well like hopefully that. fingers crossed that'll happen to our city then but it doesn't seem to be yet but i think also leeds is a lot more intense than anywhere else other than like maybe the other sheffield. major cities so like <laughs> sheffield manchester liverpool but all the other little places in between i think leeds is a big hub because people travel from all over to go out in leeds so i do think that it, it was always going to be a, mo a lot more intense yeah i'd never seen uh, a homeless man petting a dead pigeon until i'd went to uh, sheffield so that was that was the morning <laughs> after a night out and, <laughs> and, I was, right. <laughs> and i was like wow i've actually i've never been out in sheffield in fact i don't think i've ever even been to sheffield so i don't have any stories from that but that sounds like it would happen in hull as well Sheff to be sheffield has a pretty great night out but it's also a very like, rough heard that. and underdeveloped yeah. like city just because of its yeah. sort of historical roots of being like a, it's very industrial isn't industrial, it yeah, yeah. Um, I think it has a pretty bad homeless problem as well. So whilst I make light yeah. of it, like, you know, there are issues yeah. surrounding that. Yeah, I was um, going to say, yeah. But my mate went to, to Uni of Sheffield and uh -huh. yeah, he, he, across the course of his first year, like gradually figured out where the no-go zones were. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Same with any city, I yeah. think, though. I think it's like you slowly begin to realise that, okay, we won't go out there because that wasn't a great time. Um, it's, it's when, I, it's it's when just... I found out that he got burgled that was like the big like wow oh that my is, god yeah that's something <laughs> oh that dear, i don't you're think you're really selling sheffield <laughs> <laughs> you're doing it you're doing great i'm job. not here to advocate sheffield <laughs> i'm just here to tell the truth um yeah but imagine getting burgled as a student like that was the worst i literally can't imagine anything worse coming back to your flat or your student house and just no at the same time i can almost see it happening because a lot of these bloody tenants are just so blasé like some of them oh, are yeah. just so blasé about like yeah. You know, security. Our front door for my second year house was literally a shabby wooden, <laughs> a shabby <laughs> like wooden panel with six glass holes. You know, for like a little fancy little window thing. Yeah. And they're single pane, so it didn't have a lock that worked. It just had a latch. So literally, right. to break in, all someone would have to do was just smack one of those little glass windows through, reach and in, undo the latch, undo the latch, and then they're they're in. <laughs> they have access to the house. Oh dear. Yeah, that doesn't sound great. I think York's quite safe. You'll be all right. I think it's not. It's not too dangerous as cities yeah. go. I think York won an award, didn't it, for being one of the safest. York's lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I would country. say so. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, definitely, oh. probably in Yorkshire. Oh yeah, it's the heart. Of it. <laughs> um. it is. It is. That's true. <laughs> York doesn't have the best nightlife. I mean, well, well, um, this we're going to be moving on to talk about some other things in a minute, but I, I just thought I'd wrap this up with a little. Like, I don't know, random story that I saw on an night out, but like York doesn't have the best night out because it is historically and famously known for its pubs. Um, yeah, yeah. And what, what clubs do exist are pretty much just, they operate as like restaurants by day <laughs> and yes. then transform into clubs at night, which is really odd when you think that there's like probably some family of four just going for a pizza <laughs> and then... <laughs> you know a couple of hours later fast forward eight hours and there's some guy like monging out of his mind on the table there um, <laughs> nicely phrased yeah yeah um <laughs> but i mean it's just so weird there was this one night there's this club called kuda and it is right. literally a restaurant by day and yeah because of that it doesn't really have the infrastructure to support 200 people needing to go to yeah. the toilet every five minutes which, right which yeah. ultimately Not happens ideal. um and the men's toilets the uh, the urinals like overflowed <laughs> This is a really classy story. Stay with that me. That sounds so gross. The the urinals like got blocked and started overflowing, and uh, basically it meant that there was about hundred to hundred plus people waiting in the queues for the men's toilets because there was only two cubicles that were available. Um, no. And you could just see though the line of women. Like it's always usually a, like ten or twelve people outside the women's toilets waiting to go. Yeah. And you could yeah. just see they were loving it they were absolutely I would loving be. it i would be <laughs> no it's always the way isn't it men are just in and out in two yeah. seconds and then there's always a queue for the girls toilets it's it's the worst they were just laughing it up and, uh, and that's so funny <laughs> and i could just tell 
but like some of them some of the some of the thought processes you could tell they were like weighing it up is it worth it trying to queue in the women's line yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you never know i've weed in men's toilets before when the queue's been too long in the women's so they, gotta they do were, what you gotta do yeah they were they were they were considering it i reckon i reckon so <laughs> but yeah no one had any sympathy it was just it just made me laugh like that yeah. was uh, <laughs> that was a rather unpleasant unpleasant evening. Yeah, I can imagine that smell a lot. So that that was that's what that's what the night of life is like in York. But, yeah. I mean. Yeah. When I, I was doing, sorry, what were you gonna say? No, I was gonna say I've actually never been out in York. I really want to. I meant to go and stay with my friend later in the uh, year this year, but then obviously everybody came home, so I've never been clubbing in York. Well, I I mean I'm not gonna say I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> if you're free for a weekend and got nothing to do and you know you yeah. fancy a trip to York then maybe I mean I think I think York's nice to go like day drinking in I know a lot of people oh, yeah. that go to like the bars and the pubs the, the and then there's like a suburbs, couple yeah. of yeah that's more a York vibe I think than going like clubbing as such yeah definitely yeah because classically when I was researching for this episode and finding out more about uh, Leeds and Leeds uni life I naturally came across Leeds Fest um, I yes. knew it existed uh, because you know York has a similar thing um, mm-hmm. of like a confessions page where people can submit yeah. things anonymously, and mm-hmm. then randomly for some reason, I mean I can I think it's amazing that it happened, um, but it seemed to just unleash this like torrent of people also sharing these stories. But one person shared a story about an unfortunate situation that they'd had going through Hyde Park, mm-hmm. and it basically yeah. resulted in like twelve or fifteen people also submitting these posts talking about yeah. experiences that they've had um just to sort of like kick it off so this is these are stories about sexual assault is what i'm basically yeah ex- sort of getting at yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah. what because I've, I've spoken to i've spoken to people before about these sorts of situations mm. what, what is your personal first off opinion about like using these confession pages as an avenue to talk about these experiences or, um, or, or is um, it just a case of like every situation's unique and perhaps this person is just looking yeah. for an option to I think it. it's 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 difficult. I mean, I've never actually used these pages and I don't know a great deal about them because obviously I think Leeds Fest is more for people at the Uni of Leeds. Um, but I definitely think in this situation, if it's helpful for people to be able to come forward, maybe anonymously, if they don't want to put their name to it, then I, I see that as a good thing. I think that's a helpful resource, but obviously it depends. And as you said, everybody's situation probably is different, but yeah. Have you experienced or witnessed any, any sort of behavior Um, like that whilst at uni whilst whilst in Leeds no not directly I think you do have to have your wits about you and as you mentioned Hyde Park is like a known area within Leeds I think where you probably wouldn't walk through it at night on your own whether you're a male or a female because there's I don't really know why I don't know what goes on in there but it was one of the very first things my flatmate said to me he was older than me he's about 23 24 and he'd been in Leeds for a few years and he was like if you ever need walking back from anywhere that means you have to pass through Hyde Park you ring me because you don't walk through there alone and the same goes because I wouldn't want to walk through it alone and I was like oh okay and I just didn't ask any more questions but then a couple of months after living there somebody got stabbed really near to where my flat was in Hyde Park because I lived kind of at the back of Hyde Park and I, you just know that it's like a dodgy area but in terms of sexual assault I've never witnessed in any or like known of anybody that's been involved in any but I do know that it's just like an unwritten rule that you'd not go there by yourself because it's scary and it's dangerous I think it does look a bit dodgy like naturally anyway. it does it does yeah I think my only experience in there that's been like that was we went for bonfire night they do a big bonfire oh, yeah, display because yeah. obviously it's a big open area and after the show people started throwing fireworks at people like literally at people in the crowd and we oh, were like pleasant. oh my god and everybody started running and like dispersing and this group of people were obviously like I don't know high or drunk I'm not too sure and they thought it was hilarious but they were literally setting fire to like bits of ground where people were standing and we were like we need to just go let's go and that was frightening enough and obviously that wasn't you know anything directly at me but it was like the only time I've been in Hyde Park in the dark something like that did happen so yeah won't I, mean, I mean Leeds is like full of so many different people and quite a lot of them Absolutely. can just be morons <laughs> like yeah oh yeah a hundred percent and i think often maybe they're not students they might live there there's a lot of like gang culture in those kind think, of areas as well yeah i think a lot of the time they probably aren't students like yeah i don't it, think they are students but because I'd, know, I'd hope obviously. at least i mean my next question was going to be along the lines of does sort of these universities tackle these issues but my hope at least mm. was that if 
the university became aware of things like that that they would at least yeah. try and tackle it um, yeah you would hope so but it does seem to be the case that these probably aren't students and there are a lot of like you know rough council housing and and, and apartment housing and yeah there's probably that situation where it's like they don't have much else to do so why not just uh, absolutely yeah i think that that issue occurs in in every city and there's always antisocial behavior but i do think there seems to be quite a big problem with those like outskirts of leeds areas because it's it's a huge city it's an industrial city and it's got a lot of like suburbs that are like that and i think it does create an issue when then you bring so many students into the city that aren't from those areas yeah and you have situations where they're meeting each other it is it can be it can be dangerous because of your sort of social media aspect and and, and background mm. and stuff do people approach you about these issues does anyone come forward to you and, and um yeah occasionally not very often obviously i think that before i moved to leeds i didn't have a very leeds based audience but then once i was there i did have a couple of like charities and stuff reach out and be like oh we'd really appreciate it if you could share this like we're a charity set up by students run running for other students for things like that for like i don't know women and women's shelters but then also for like student mental health and things like that and of course usually it's so easy to just share them onto instagram and like although i'm not getting anything directly from it and it's not helping me it is helping people that watch me and helping my viewers which is obviously amazing and the exact kind of thing i want to be sharing so it was useful for things like that i think yeah do you think do you think from your experience that the unis are trying to tackle it in leeds or do you think it's more of a a deep-rooted <sighs> issue in in the actual sort of society do you yeah, think it, do you think, think it goes more to like sort of policy government level local parliament level rather than i think it's a mixture of both because obviously if it is students then that's the university issue i think but if it's not then yeah and i think it's hard because obviously they are there are two huge universities in leeds and i would hope that they are doing stuff regarding i don't know sexual assault any form of anything like that but firsthand i don't know if they are because obviously i was never involved and i didn't study there but i would hope that they do definitely speak about it and you know just make make people aware of what's going on yeah i mean if it is a case of you know importance and the need of of local parliament sort of intervention it is a case of yeah. like improving education and improving investment into like these Absolutely. sort of outside sort of the main sort of center of C lead city yeah. area because a lot of that area gets most of the investment and you, and you see yeah, you don't have yeah. to go very far before you, you know <laughs> no. you, you're in like wall-to-wall -wall council houses and things yeah. like that so Absolutely. but as you say that that's an experience that probably replicates across the country um, oh 100 percent. i know the whole is the same definitely yeah what are some of the what are some of the apart from obviously what we've talked about with Hyde Park is there anything else that comes to mind about things that maybe people coming to Leeds don't immediately realize that maybe they could use with knowing oh that's interesting I think that's definitely the main one and I didn't know that but I very quickly learned that um other than that no I think it's just like you you start to learn which clubs feel safer I think once you've been out a couple of times because there are some areas where it's always like there's a couple of dodgy men and you just don't really want to go there because it's not really a vibe but yeah. obviously that changes quite often but you do pick up a vibe I think the more you go out especially during the first couple of months when you're a fresher and you're learning you know what's what you just become aware and you become a bit more self-aware as well I think of how to act in those situations because I don't know about everybody else but obviously that was the first time that I'd ever really been on my own for a great amount of time and like you know really responsible for myself so yeah you just gotta have your wits about you I agree with that. Peace yeah. to that. <laughs> right, with the hindsight of university, I'm going to now ask Molly Thompson to introduce me to 10 things that she couldn't survive without <laughs> at university. <laughs> I'm and excited for this segment. I had fun making this list. Right, so the first thing, I think this is every student's go-to, or maybe it was just my flat, but packet rice. I don't know about everybody else, but I ate this literally probably about five times a week with just various different other things. Um, and it's easy and it's cheap and it's quick to do and it feels healthy even though it's probably not. So that was my first because I think I lived on that. I turned into a grain of rice. Uncle um, Ben's. <laughs> Uncle Ben's, yeah. I mean, this is, this is more expensive, but when I was an actual student, it would have been Morrison's own. Um, okay, second paracetamol or ibuprofen always because after a night out you're gonna have a headache and i always had a 9am because of the course i did i was in at nine every single day so it didn't even matter what day of the week i went out i had to be up so yeah. one of these Absolutely. in your drawer 
necessity. 100%, yeah. Um, okay, next one. Multiple mugs or glasses because I was quite lazy with washing up, so I'd rather have more so that I could just drink out of a clean one instead of washing up the last one. And that's probably <laughs> bad. But also it's good it's good to make a cup of tea it's lazy, and but it's fine. It is yeah, but I would I'd like leave two or three mugs in the kitchen that needed washing up and then I'd have some in my room and it would just be like, oh, I'll just get a clean one. So I had a lot of a lot of mugs and a lot of glasses, so that's that. Okay, the next ones are like for the appearance, going back to, you know, when you're looking a bit rough. First one is dry shampoo because I'm not somebody that washes my hair every day and I don't have time for that. So that was a must because I was just, I was I was already lazy before I went, but I think that it made me it a bit lazier. <laughs> it got worse. It, yeah, it did. So dry shampoo, always, along with concealer because I think I spent the entire year that I lived in Leeds being tired. So being able to just cover that up really quickly before you rush out for your 9am that was a must um, you have the appearance okay, the of next, being awake then at yeah, least <laughs> yeah, I pretend as I'm asleep in my uh, lecture um, but okay don't have the next ones oh no I do I've got one more okay this is so random this is a door stop which Whoa. doesn't look like a door stop <laughs> Yeah, but it is. Um, so I stood this just, you know, on my door to keep it open so that my flatmates could just kind of like chat to me through the door without yeah. having to like knock and make a big deal about it. Plus, I think the first couple of weeks it makes it a bit more sociable. You don't have to have one that looks as ridiculous as this. I think you can just get a regular doorstop. For context, I like yeah, I just talk. had a regular doorstop. Yeah, I normal didn't. People I didn't do. think that was what you were going to pull out, but I'm yeah, impressed. No. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay, next things I don't have to hand, but a television. I loved my television because I was, like whenever I was feeling a bit lonely or just a bit like I wanted background noise, I'd just put the telly on and I think that was such a help, like especially in the first couple of weeks. Um, so a TV, um, any fancy dress item was my next one because there's always a fancy yeah. dress night or yeah. just a random themed especially night. Especially in Leeds. Yeah, oh my god, Leeds love a fancy dress. So if you can get like a, a Hawaiian shirt or like a, a bu feather boa, that kind of thing, um, yeah, make sure you've got one of those. Oh, I think this is the last one. Some slippers because the floor in the kitchen is gross. <laughs> so shared just don't flat, wear bare feet. Shared flat kitchens. <laughs> yeah, you need slippers or socks or something you can just always put on before you go in the kitchen, especially if you live with four boys that have never cleaned up before. So, yeah. Have you ever had someone lift up their foot and it's when they're wearing socks in the shared kitchen and it's just caked in like yes, dirt yes. and grass? Yes, yes. Or even worse, I remember one time we'd had prees in our flat and the next morning you could hear the like sticking and like lifting up when people were walking of the like oh. alcohol stuck to the floor and I was just like, yeah, this is no. so gross. This isn't even human level oh. of like cleanliness. But that was awesome. Thank you so much. They That's were really okay. useful. A lot of those... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> were things that I personally found amazingly yeah. useful as well. Uh -huh. um, yeah, the doorstop was mad though. Can I see yeah. that again? Yes, you can. I mean, really, you can just buy a regular doorstop, but this is yeah. my hedgehog doorstop. So I, yeah, I, I also I, have I, a dog one as well. I've got two. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Didn't need so you to. Just change it up depending on your yeah. mood. Yeah, only had one door, but two yeah. doorstops. Two doorstops. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. I That's hope you okay. enjoyed sort of. Giving I us did. an insight into what made your uni, like first uni, Absolutely. sort of bearable. It was like a blast from least. the past. I felt like I was packing again and I was going to take it all with me. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people will be checking those like yes. uh, uni essential lists and stuff. So yeah. maybe yeah. that will make, you know, there you go. Take a, a door stop. Take Answer a my reprofen. <laughs> Absolutely though. Like <laughs> before we move on, like using a door stop, such an easy and simple way to just sort of non-verbally say, you can I'm open talk to, to a me. chat. Yeah, and you can, absolutely. You can come in and, and, and talk. So yeah, I mean, I definitely think that that taking a door stop such a like a it's maybe something you might miss because I don't think the unis like advocate keeping your yeah. door open. Yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> maybe not, but whatever. I know I did every day. Oh, I did. Every yeah, day. yeah. We, they're all fire doors, but yeah, <laughs> they're like, heavy you know as what? well, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> they are. Yeah, all spring loaded and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because I saw on your, I think it was Twitter, I did like a little deep dive mm. on your oh, Twitter. Great. <laughs> um, yeah, people, I mean, Twitter is another case of like a microcosm of like everyone who's on Twitter thinks what's said on Twitter is like Bible, gospel. Yeah, yeah. It like, you know, it basically makes or breaks people's careers, yeah. for example. Um, an interesting thing that's happening at the moment is a thing called cancel culture. And I, and I, and I noticed you shared or, <laughs> or tweeted something about cancel culture. Yeah. 
so yeah. I thought it might be interesting to talk about your opinion on it okay um, Ricky Gervais recently has gone like after people who are yeah, advocating can- cancel culture yeah um, and he's classically that's like such a he's like a people's champion he's been he's been sort of monikered by the people yeah um, as it were and I can't help but see it as like in certain cases there are there are there are positions where like you know like jk rowling's like transphobic mm. or whatever mm. and yeah people like call her out for it and like fair play that, that yeah. makes sense because she's yeah, out of being like, like yeah. transphobic but there is that sort of like mob mentality of if someone has a target they yeah. can pretty much just like they can't get say anything fired right. yeah and they can't and there's they, they can they can basically destroy someone's life in a sense mm. um just from what they say i remember this really interesting story that i saw when i was watching a ted talk Mm -hmm. i'm gonna completely butcher the details because it is literally just me remembering it now (laughs) um but there was this woman who tweeted something that i think she was meant it was meant to be a joke she tweeted something about race or gender or something political or something like that it and she tweeted it before she went on a plane and it was like a 12-hour flight or something and yeah she couldn't use the internet so she tweeted this thing before going on the plane and when the plane landed and she turned on her you know mobile data or whatever yeah yeah her phone literally was blowing up she was getting contacted by like news stories and and, like papers trying to get in touch with her her twitter feed was just absolutely blowing up other people reacting to this comment yeah and her life basically was destroyed because yeah. people were calling her a racist and a, and, a, and, a, and whatever it was i can't remember what it was specifically about um but paper, people were just vilifying her because yeah. of this tweet and it made it to this guy who was talking at this ted talk because he basically he does um psychology and analyzes how people mm-hmm. act online and how people act when they've done th- things like serial killers and, and yeah. like talks to these people and an interesting person to talk to is someone who's had their life like completely destroyed yeah. by like social yeah. media and and one mistake and uh-huh. how it can you know completely change your life. Yeah. Um, I've been talking at you for a lot for the last five <laughs> minutes, but what what how how do you see all this like I, in terms of you know? I see. I do see both sides, but I just think it's so dangerous, and I think it's also really damaging because we live in a world now where like half the time you're advocating for mental health and it's like don't say stuff like that because what if they end up you know doing something stupid but then you also have the people that are constantly at you for doing anything and everything that they can nitpick apart and find a problem with and I think that you have to be somewhere in the middle because otherwise you're just like it's too difficult and I think that cancel culture generally has sprung up quite a lot over the last year two years and it makes social media a really hard place to navigate because where previously it was just an opinion now it's like well no that's the wrong opinion and you're gonna lose your job for that and you can't be on this tv show because you said that and you know you're gonna be on hate forums online because you just said this when you shouldn't have said it and yes maybe they shouldn't have said it but also maybe it's a one-off mistake and i think there's a difference between genuinely making a mistake and being a racist or homophobic or one of those things that like is an actual issue and it's not just a one-off mistake and i think that it's hard being online now it is it's it's a constant sort of self self censoring that can yeah. sometimes happen oh, especially yeah. if especially if you're in a position like yourself where you have to be aware i'd imagine yeah. of what you're posting and things like yeah, that yeah of course um there's there's also like at the minute there's sort of ricky gervais has talked a lot about this but it's like you know cancel culture sort of limiting how far comedy can go in terms uh, of, of course, you know, yeah. how, how far it pushes the comedy I mean, yeah. you know, when, when all the Black Lives Matter stuff started and people started making calls for, you know, like the Monty Python episodes mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. to be removed from yeah. Netflix. And, yeah. and it's like, stuff like that is just ridiculous, in I my know. opinion. Yeah, I it's think like, some things are just taken too far. And I think that with, with the Black Lives Matter thing, some things were openly racist and like they should have been taken off. And I don't really know why they were ever made. But then there are some things and it's like, these are the people that are just finding absolutely everything to find a problem with and I think that that's when it gets to the point where it's an issue and like you otherwise you're going to be censoring absolutely everything that everybody says and the, what kind of world is that like if you can't yeah. have an opinion or if you can't have your sense of humor I don't know it's it's hard to navigate it yeah I had a friend of mine come on to talk about the Black Lives Matter movement and her experiences yeah. of being black and things like yeah. that and 
it's just it was so clear that that movement and the Black Lives Matter and what they're trying to do was just nothing mm. to do with what generally it seemed like white people mm. were saying then taking offence on behalf of black yeah. people yeah. it seemed like for for episodes like the Monty Python yeah and you know just asking just you know like badgering and 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 and, and lobbying for these studios to remove these certain yeah. episodes and things no, like that absolutely and it just completely like belittles the point of, yeah because they're yeah. not advocating for that episode no i mean there's this there's, there's certain like you know episodes like the david uh, what's his face they, they david did that Williams. black face episode yeah, david yeah, Williams. yeah that was quite a big one that yes. was like blowing up or there's like i remember people were throwing back in the faces of people claiming that that was racist about the film yeah. white chicks have you seen yeah. the film white chicks yeah. no i haven't but i saw i saw it on twitter the um people talking about it there's nothing wrong with white chicks yeah. at all it's actually <laughs> yeah i don't know too much i don't really know anything about it at all but it did it's just hard i think because you can't do right for doing wrong and i say this all the time even just when it comes to like my job and what i'm doing and what my friends in this industry are doing it's like you literally can't do right for doing wrong you can't please everybody because there's always people that will find something to try and cancel you over or just complain at you for or make out that you're a bad person for it and it's it's difficult because you just you've yeah. got to kind of ignore it are you sort of aware of yourself making sure you're not are you are you like when you're thinking about sharing something or taking yeah. part in something or participating in something like maybe this for example yeah was it a case of making sure that it was going to be something that represented you truthfully yeah yeah i think and so and i think it's it's hard and it's becoming harder to know what is going to cross the line because i think in my head that in my day-to-day -day life there's probably things that i do that if i shared would get like i don't know hated on more even just for example when i was a student and i was going out a lot people didn't like that because i was like promoting clubbing and doing this and like promoting underage drinking even though i wasn't underage obviously at the time but my audience are so it's like okay do i share that no i don't and then it's just become like even more escalated i think over the last couple of months with everything going on um yeah. it's it's hard and i think that i'm more aware of it than ever before it's not something that i specifically particularly have to worry about i mean everyone self senses yeah. in a way but like yeah, obviously of course, you, yeah. you've got a, like you know my outreach as it were only extends to sort of friends and family and things like mm. that and i mean i'm pretty fair-minded person like i yeah. don't particularly yeah. seem to have any extreme views so i don't really yeah. tend to worry about it too much i'm gonna move on to talk about the experience of backpacking and traveling and, and yes. going abroad and this is my jam <laughs> this is your jam this is what you've been waiting for yes it is it is i just feel like this is what i can talk about best but when did you when did you go traveling when was that was that last year or the year before so it was this year just um just. well i've i've done a lot of on and off travel but i've never backpacked until this year so i've been lucky enough to go to a lot of places but always more as like a holiday um whereas yeah. when i went to australia i backpacked it for seven weeks and i started i flew out on new year's day or the day after new year's day so january the second and i was there for seven weeks and i got back and then the lockdown happened like two weeks later um in australia Jeez. and in singapore because i went to singapore as yeah. well um, so I got back just before like the timing couldn't have been better really in terms of being able to travel this year um, So yeah, I was out there for seven weeks in the winter time, but Australian summer Yeah, that must be uh, not actually cold in Australia though. No, oh god. No, it was it was so so hot It was amazing and I literally just can't recommend it enough <laughs> Were you solo back to back traveling? Is that what you were doing or were you with yeah. someone? No, I think I a lot of people go through that issue of yes. i'm doing the same like i'm properly having to I, I i kind of want to go to australia and back yeah back. um or, or even it. just live there and work there for like three well, months or something. well that's what's on my list now of whenever this is over and australia reopen their borders to go back to hopefully live there for a bit um but yeah no, i did it by myself so that was a big decision obviously um, i can imagine yeah yeah having only ever i moved to leeds and i hated it i was homesick and i had friends there so i was like oh yeah i'll go off to australia by myself <laughs> that's my a mom great and, idea that'll be uh... and were like are you sure and i was like yeah 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 and they're like are you sure you're sure and i was really nervous when i 
like flew out there obviously I think the most overwhelming bit was the 24 hours on the plane by myself because as Jeez, soon as yeah. I got there I just met so many friends because most people or a lot of people solo travel Australia so they're in the same boat so I met people oh. in my hostel on the very first day that I'm still friends with now that I speak to yeah. because they were by themselves as well and I think I was lucky because I did it although I did go out there by myself I did it in like little tour groups so I'd meet people and I would travel with them for like one week and then it would be yeah. like an organized tour so I was never like completely on my own and I was never like in any danger or like in a situation that I hadn't planned before I got there yeah see that's that's an issue that I'm sort of going through my mind is yeah. if I did because the chances are I'm never going to find anyone who's willing to commit to going to Australia with me exactly so. yeah, which is my <laughs> issue and I also think that if you do it with somebody you have to make sure that they're also having a good time and that you're doing something that you both want to do whereas if you go for yourself as selfish as it sounds like you're just having the best time because you're doing what you want to do without the responsibility yeah. of anybody being with you, which is why I didn't want to do it with any of my friends. And I know that sounds mean because I've got some amazing friends, but I wanted to do it alone. But you're just like, this is me time now. Yeah, I was like, this I'm all going out me. to Australia. And it just sounded so cliche. And all my friends were like, oh, you're going to find yourself. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, no, <literally. laughs> no. But then kind of, yeah, because I did just have seven weeks of like, just me doing exactly what I wanted and having the best time. Yeah, I mean, that is the worry that I have if I did choose to do that, whether I would find people to meet. But yeah. is that how you, you would. do it, going yeah. through, like, hostels and things like that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that it's one of the most travelled places, and the East Coast, so, like, from Melbourne or Sydney up to Cairns, is the most backpacked route in the world. So you don't... <laughs> you're never going to be on your own because there's hostels every couple of miles, and also there's just people that are also out there on your own. So what happened to me quite often was like, although I was in a tour group and I was with similar people, we'd bump into yeah. people a week or two later that we'd met two weeks ago oh, because no they, were, they were doing the same route just on a different time scale. So you'd sit down yeah. for breakfast in the hostel and you'd be like, oh, I saw you in Brisbane. Hi. <laughs> and it'd be really bizarre. But you it just was catch just, up. Yeah, yeah, and it was amazing. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I don't think you'd have to worry about not meeting people because there's so many young travelers there. Yeah, that sounds awesome. It's it definitely really something is. that I'm thinking, like, if I'm going to do it, it's got to be now rather than yeah. never. Yeah, that's exactly what I felt like. And when I got home, I said that to my boyfriend and I said, look, if you want to do it, because he was very on the fence. And to start with, I was like, well, we could do it together. But he works full time and he, he was happy for me to go on my own. And when I got yeah. back, he was like, do you know what? You've kind of convinced me. And I feel like if I don't do it now, there's never a right time in my life that is going to be better than this because one day you're going to have a house and you're going to have kids. And it's like, this is now. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's got yeah. to be, uh, for me personally, it's got to be probably graduate and then maybe make yeah. that decision to do Which it. Which is what a lot of people, in fact, most people that I met out there had come either straight from school and they were 18 doing a gap year or straight from graduating and they were like 21, 22, 23 um, and doing a gap year or a couple of months in Australia. Yeah. I'm just half expecting my parents like got a cup to the door just going like, <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> No, honestly, just do Who's it. Who's paying they, for this? <laughs> yeah, well, my parents were a bit a bit cautious because I'd never solo travelled before. I'd never even flown on my own before. Um, but as soon as I got there and I just fell in love with it, they were like, you've made the right decision. I can imagine it wouldn't take long for you to arrive in Australia and think, yeah, uh, this, this is yeah. the place to be. Yeah, literally. I think it was within the first week I was like, I love this place. Like, it's just, it's like everything the UK is, but a hundred times better. <laughs> it really is oh that is an advocation for it sure it is yeah i am the biggest advocate what is the uh, what is what's the expenses like though for, for going to is it um, you, you, is it easy enough to play it on the cheap sort of thing but still have a pretty good experience yeah absolutely i think australia is quite expensive as a place just because you can't get there for cheap so you've got to, you've got to save up a lot just to be able to fly there because the, the flights are expensive once you get there, I don't think it's too bad. Um, the the exchange rate with the UK makes it really good. Um, but obviously you can travel to other places cheaper. Like if you were to do Thailand or if you were to do any of Southeast Asia, that is more affordable than Australia. But I think for the experience, it's well worth it in Australia. And you can do it for like $15 a night in a hostel, that kind of price. So it's not yeah. too bad. What's the m most like freaky insect that you saw uh, you must have seen something yeah i did i think that that was the thing i was the most nervous about um because i'm 
terrified of spiders. Like I would say I've never met anybody with a worse fear of spiders than me. Which well, also I mean, I was... think you've gone to the worst place yeah, in the world. I know. <laughs> and I was like, why am I doing this? And my parents were like, Molly, what are you doing? And I was like, yeah, I've got to see any. And they were like, yeah, you will. But I actually only saw one spider in seven weeks. And I think I thought they were going to be like crossing the road in front of me every single day. But they're just, they're not that common. So I did see one. I saw a huntsman spider. I don't that know if you know the what they look I was like. Thinking of. Yeah, I do. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're the ones that can grow to like the size yeah. of your hand, aren't they? Yeah. Then it was about that big, but I was doing this like oh. camping excursion. So we were staying in like a base camp um, and it was beautiful. It was like on a beach and everything, but because it was on a beach, yeah. ugh, cobwebs everywhere. So when I wasn't seeing Ooh. spiders, I was seeing their cobwebs, but then we were walking back from the beach and everybody stopped and I was like, what are you looking at? And just on the path, there was like, huntsman spider about that big and I was like no 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 but I was kind of okay because it wasn't inside but then I spent the whole night that I was in our little like hut thing with my phone torch like checking around checking the bed I was oh, see that's gotta be like the worst thing because then chances yeah. are you will find something well exactly all my friends that I made up there they were like don't go looking for them and I was like no I need to I need to check there's not any anywhere and they were like she's doing her like search of the room again and I was like yeah I am because I don't want to be bitten by a huntsman <laughs> spider I mean, an understandable concern to have. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But luckily, I didn't. I didn't see any snakes. I didn't see anything really crazy. There's a lot of lizards that just walk around in the street and in the road. And I mean, like big lizards, like this size. That's like, cool though. Yeah, it is. I was like taken aback, but yeah, it's got some beautiful wildlife as well. Like, it's just a really nice country. <laughs> big fan, yeah. if you couldn't tell. <laughs> oh, I know. I can tell. I like people <laughs> who are passionate about stuff. That's the main reason why we're getting on this podcast. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm not trying to come across as someone who's not faced by spiders either. I think yeah. I'd probably have that issue as well. I if think I saw everybody, a everybody would be faced by a huntsman. Even the people that are like, "Oh, I'm not scared of spiders. I'd pick them up for fun." You wouldn't because it's like this big, and it, it would probably kill you. But going to Australia is, you know, a massive experience to have, mm. and you've got to like make the most of it while you're there. Yeah. Um, Dylan, who I spoke to on episode one, he, yeah. uh, I think, I think he went all around like sydney because he was studying in uni of sydney and oh, he, did, like, loads of, like, he did like lo loads of ro road trips and, yeah. and trips around yeah i think he was considering doing skydiving at one point i wasn't yeah. sure if he actually did it or not yeah um is there anything like really memorable that you did while you were, while you were at <sighs> australia i'm not sure Everything. if it's like to that extreme of skydiving but well i didn't skydive but i will i want to and next time i go if i go back i will do that because all my friends did it because i was in like this tour so there was a lot of like excursions that were optional and i was like no no i'm not doing that like i'll see you later whatever and then they all got back and they're on such a high and i was like oh i wish i skydived now even though i'm also <laughs> terrified of heights yeah, yeah but i think a standout uh, there's so many i can't pick like the friends that i made are like the main thing but probably my very favorite thing was i don't know if you've heard of the whitsundays they're a collection no, of I islands What's that? so they're like 73 islands off the coast of australia and they're kind of are located in the barrier reef so it's like gorgeous right. water gorgeous scenery and we did this three-day boat trip where we like slept on the boat and like you know camped on the islands and that kind of thing um and it was just the best thing i've ever done and we were like scuba diving and snorkeling and it was like the barrier reef so it was beautiful and I, the um, whole time I was there, the whole three days, I was just like, this is not my life. Like, this is just, this is craziness. Because I'd never been somewhere that was so beautiful and just made me feel so calm. Because it was just, like, unlike anywhere I've ever been. So yeah. that's probably the best thing I've ever done, ever. But also my favourite part of my trip. Wow. You painted yeah. the picture there, for yeah. sure. I'm yeah, like, am I'm I like, convincing you? It's it's <laughs> going through my head. Like, yeah. this is what's got to happen. Yeah, I, sure. I really recommend it. I mean, why should someone go traveling? You've mentioned like friends and, and sort of like, you know, what, what, what sold it for you? Was it those experiences and meeting new people? Yeah, I think so. I think before I left, I just, I felt at a real loose end and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I still don't really know what I want to do like career wise. And I thought, do you know what? I just, the only thing I'm certain about is that I want to see the world and I want to see as much of it as I can. So Australia seemed like a place to start. It has a lot of travellers and I thought if I like it, then I'll know that I could do it further afield, well, not further afield, but like in other places. Um, so I just think it makes you have experiences that you can't have anywhere else. So like you can't have them in a classroom. You're not gonna learn them staying in your hometown. Like it's just makes you as a person more well-rounded, I think. And the friends I made were obviously a huge bonus. And that was definitely why I fell in love with Australia because I met just the most amazing people that were like-minded. And I think that's, 
probably what sold it yeah were they from various like european yeah. international countries yeah so it wasn't so just like the old the old girl from hull <laughs> surrounded by no. a bunch of like australian no. like gods no. <laughs> so there was the tour guides and the people that i met that were obviously from there were australian um and i met a lot of amazing aussies but the people on the tours yeah. with me were primarily the british american or german lots of germans backpack australia um, and other European cities as well, like French, Sweden, whatever. Um, but it was a real mixed bag, and that was also amazing because now I've got friends that came home and they're based in Germany, they're based in Portugal, and it's like yeah. cool just to have that experience that I could go and visit them in in other countries. Right. So we're gonna get we're getting close to the end of the podcast. We're gonna sort of wrap it up with a few like final bits. Mm-hmm. Something that I was keen to talk about on this episode. Um, was like the importance of relationships at uni and your experience yeah. and obviously because you're in one um, yes. I'm not <laughs> um, <laughs> and like sort of like how it is going into that sort of realm because there's like a big scene at, at uni is relationships and dating and things like that yeah um, and just some of the mistakes people make or some, some of the yeah. some of the things that can happen um, and like from what I've seen, there seems to be a few main situations. Like, there's a few main like thought processes that people have. Um, yeah. The 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 idea that you will find like your life partner at uni, like across those yeah. three years. And yeah, I think that's I mean, true. The odds are kind of in your favor in a way because you know yeah, you're at, you're at uni, so, yeah. surrounded by lots of different people, and there's lots of yeah. interesting people that you come across. Um, another quite controversial slash debated topic is like breaking up before going yeah. to university yeah that is like such a big thing I that was is so quite surprised. a popular thing though i think that happens quite often yeah and the, i mean that sort of like is embroiled in the idea of like was it really that serious was it you know is yeah. it is it more yeah. like selfish about that sort of thing um mm. and like the idea that maybe if you go to uni is there something like wrong with you almost if you don't date yeah um, yeah because it's so like open and free and independent and stuff yeah like that. absolutely um, and then just finally like r- rushing it way too much and, and getting involved yeah. like super seriously early on yeah. and things like that. Sort of from your perspective of someone who's sort of not had to, I wouldn't say mm. really concern themselves with that element of, of yeah. the experience. Have you witnessed a lot of people? Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think, I think every situation you just described there, I've got a friend that falls into one of those categories. I've had like <laughs> friends that got with somebody from like Freshers Week and yeah. then people that broke up right before they were left for uni and then people that broke up around Christmas time that had tried it and it hadn't worked. And then obviously I've got friends and myself included that stay together throughout university from, from college and sixth form. So I do think it just depends on like you as a person and also the situation that you're in because it's a bit of a double-edged sword I can see both sides to like I want to go to uni and be single and be free and live my best single life but then also (laughs) I think that if you don't want to do that and you want to stay in your relationship and you're happy that's absolutely fine as well obviously like that's what I did but I think that it's it's a weird one because there's pros and cons to both obviously yeah it's 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 a it's a confusing and difficult situation to get into it is because yeah. like there's so many different things that are a factor um mm-hmm. what do you th- what do you think about people who break up before going to university do you think it's a good idea i or, think or if if they both are mutually that's where they're both at then like fine and if it was just like a bit of fun while you're at college fine but if it's like if it's not and if it's just because you want to experiment and maybe see if like the grass is greener i think that's sometimes a little bit silly because if you are genuinely happy with somebody why would you break up with them for the sake of maybe finding somebody else it sounds like something that would happen on like love island to me i just think that if you're (laughs) happy you don't need to go looking for something that makes you happier but then if that is to happen when you're at uni and you do meet somebody else obviously that's when you cross that bridge and assess that I, heard of, I mean, I heard a few stories of people going on Love Island and then it came out that they literally just like ended a serious relationship yeah. before going oh, on the yeah, show. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wow. Real, real quality. I think they will do <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> real quality personality yeah, trait there. Yeah, um, yeah. But I mean, for sure, like, if you go, from my perspective, like, it seems like people who break up before uni, maybe they want that sort of like... Yeah. They feel like they might miss out on that freshers experience. Yeah. And I do whatever. I do get that and I see that side to it. And there were definitely times when obviously I'd moved to Leeds and I wasn't with my boyfriend where I was thinking like, would I be having a different experience at uni if 
I was single and it's easy to be like well yeah I probably would but then also you have to just question like would that make you happier because it, it might temporarily but like long term I thought obviously like that's not what I want to do but I do have yeah. friends that that worked out fine for them and now they've met somebody else from being at uni and you know it all works out doesn't it and I don't yeah. think you can predict it but it's it's definitely a hard time I think it's a conflicting confusing process to go through yeah especially like I, I personally don't think that if, if it is a particularly difficult time for you for you personally yeah. that you should be trying to do stuff like dating and things like yeah. that yeah no absolutely you know you, you're so much in your own head that yeah. how can you expect anyone else to like want to connect with you on that level like, yeah plus I think also you're going through such a transitional period in your life anyway where everything is up and down and like your whole life's changing that that's just an extra thing to throw on top of oh, that and if you're already struggling oh no. with all of that and your degree like you are actually you know getting a degree yeah. then it can feel a lot like it's a it's a stressful time yeah is there anything that you've learned from other people's experiences about how you approach your own relationship or, or, or are you just um, like are you no, just killing it say, are you just killing it every day <laughs> no obviously I think there were times that especially to be honest in the run-up to uni where both of us were like well there's a strong chance this might not work out and we I think the beauty of like our relationship was that we were very easy going and we'll just say that to each other and like we were very honest and very open and we just like say look if this doesn't work then it doesn't work but like we're gonna give it a go but I had friends who I looked at and I thought like, I can see where this is going wrong for you and they can't necessarily see it themselves because you know, you're blind to it when you're in this situation. And that helped me be like, okay, that's not something that I want to happen. Like I had a friend who really, there was just no trust in their relationship at all. And she was constantly checking where he was and who he was with and stuff. And like, she just didn't need to be in that situation. It was just not good for her head yeah. because she didn't trust him and because he wasn't, really you know treating her nicely but then that made me think well it's so important that we're not like that and we do just trust each other and it's like hard because they ultimately did break up and that was difficult then because I was like yeah but you you just couldn't see it and it's frustrating but it's it's a hard time going through something like that as a first year as a fresher because you're not prepared for it you've never had any anything like that before no it's it's a, it's a lot to take on board especially it is when, it when, really as is. you say when you're like first year just trying to get get you know for me yeah. it was like just trying to get a handle on the basics let alone trying yeah. to like oh yeah yeah <laughs> trying to become an adult just trying to live as an adult is is yeah. hard enough i think yeah i mean i tried to think of some of like i mean i tried to think uh, we're coming across from this like you've been in a relationship throughout the whole year that you were mm. there i yeah. haven't been in a relationship for the last two years of me being yeah. at uni so yeah there are really like no <laughs> there's yeah. no like middle ground no, really no overlap <laughs> no <laughs> yeah but, but I, I think it's interesting from both perspectives yeah I tried to in that in that vein I tried to find some like do's and don'ts sort of thing yeah um, yeah all I could think of was more on the mental health side of things absolutely in yeah in terms of like you know it can just be you know it's a very closed environment and you can people are prone to just finding someone and then like clinging to that person yeah whether it, yeah, you mentioned that's it very there true. with that with that story about your friend um and not being able to realize that it's perhaps not the best yeah because you're, you're so obsessed with making it work and like sticking with yeah. that person because that's all you've ever known and i think that can be quite dangerous yeah so that's the only thing that i could think of um in terms of that because you know i don't have a whole lot of experience yeah. with it. Um, <laughs> well i have i don't have a whole lot of experience because i've been in this relationship for a, a really long time and i don't have any previous experience really so all i can go off is like you know what i've been through but it's worked for us but obviously every every situation is different and yeah you can't really you can't predict what's going to happen when you move away i don't think to university no i see a lot of people rushing it in first year as well i mean yeah. sometimes it can yeah. work out and they actually do somehow manage to make that work stay but together yeah yeah it, it, rushing it in first year as well i've seen i've seen some of the people who lived in my flat dating and and, and bringing people over that yeah, were just like I've why are you doing in that? that situation <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But becomes, you, you've you've got yeah. to learn haven't you in like a light-hearted way like it comes a bit of a joke like do you remember when yeah. you brought that person yeah, around and yeah, like yeah, look yeah. at them now and they just get so it's funny <laughs> Yeah, no, I do. I think you've got to go through those things. Though. You've got to, you've got to make those mistakes. Yeah, but it's part of the fun of it. Exactly. Is there any bit of advice that you'd maybe give? I don't know to anyone listening or to me or what? I don't. I don't um, know. what to somebody that's in a relationship at uni or to somebody that's uh, wanting to be? 
I think it's, well, I, I, think well, it I depends. Wouldn't, I wouldn't really say I'm wanting to be, but maybe <laughs> to, to avoid. Um, I just think it comes back to what I was just saying about just trusting another person. Like, I think if you can't trust somebody or if you can't talk to them about stuff, like, there's no point really enforcing anything. Like, if you, you go to uni and you're just, like, eaten up by the thought of them being around other people and, like, really jealous and they're really jealous, I just think that that's a big red flag. Like, that's a no. So, trust is my biggest advice, yeah. I hope people have found that little bit <laughs> useful. I feel like I've just given advice on something I really am bad at giving advice on. I mean, I've done it a few times on this, so <laughs> it, it is what it is, but it's it been is, yeah. uh, a genuine pleasure to have you on the show and it's oh, been fun talking to you. thank you very much. You. It's been really, really nice. I've enjoyed this conversation a lot. Yeah. It's been good. I'm glad. I'm very much glad. If you, uh, wherever you've been listening to this, uh, I say it every week, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever, I um, hope you enjoyed and you've been checking in across the weeks to who we've been speaking to uh, but yeah thank you very much for watching and listening and this has been molly thompson and liam daly on the university and everything in between hope you enjoy we'll see you next week